Hello, good morning. Welcome to Join News Dex. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokom Limli. Coming up this morning, Tema Oil Refinery Pipeline at the Tema Heavy Industrial Area on Fire. Short clips are seen by Join News Show firefighters trying to bring the situation under control. We are live at the scene for an update. Also this morning, five persons killed in a mine collapsed at the Akun community in Takwa of the Western Region Moor as manager of the facility shuts down the affected site. And what do you know about acute conjunctivitis, also known as Apollo, mode of transmission, treatment, and even prevention? Stay with us as we find out from the eye specialist who will be joining us later in the studio. We have all of this coming up shortly. Please stay for details. Firefighters are working to put out a blaze which is consuming some pipelines belonging to the Tema Oil Refinery located at the heavy industrial area. The cause of the fire is not immediately known. Acton PRO of the Tema Oil Refinery, Matilda Empre, has been speaking to journalists. Listen. We'll be bringing you that sound shortly, but my colleague Carlos Coloni is at this, uh, the uh, place, the scene, and he brings us some updates. Carlos, what's the status of the blaze? All right, so Aisha, uh, for now, the blaze has been brought under control. I mean, the fire has been down, and uh, this incident actually happened at uh, one of the booster stations near Tama Oil Refinery. And that particular booster station is managed by Quantum Oil. And at this same uh, booster station, there is another uh, uh, booster um, station which is managed by Tama Oil Refinery. So the one that uh, the fire got it actually belongs to Quantum Oil. And we've been speaking to the uh, acting PRO of Tama Oil Refinery. Uh, Madame Matilda Ampre, and she's been saying that uh, all is well now. Uh, the incident happened because of some pressure buildup when they were actually discharging uh, LPG, but now they have been able to diffuse that pressure, and the fire has been brought under control. I'm still here. I can see fire service uh, uh, personnel here. About uh, four of the uh, fire tenders are here. Uh, even though uh, the fire has been brought under control, they are still here. We are told that the PRO of uh, the region will be here to speak to the media. And so uh, that is the update. Uh, the fire actually did not happen at the summer oil refinery. It's actually one of the booster stations, which is about some uh, six, seven hundred meters away from the summer oil refinery, Isa. Carlos Caloni is our man there. Definitely will bring you more uh, from the Temoyo refinery in our subsequent bulletins. Right now, five persons have been confirmed dead in a mine collapse at the Akon community, a mining uh, site in Takwa. Bodies of the deceased have been removed and deposited at the Takwa morgue. The managers of the mine have subsequently shut down the affected site for further safety investigations. My colleague Sam Okujubris has been following the development for us and has come through with this report. The Akun Community Mining is a major part of the Takwa Community Mining Program commissioned by the President in 2021. 
data available indicates that 4,887 persons were directly in the mine. On September 13, there was a major accident. Dan, not his real name, is a miner at the Abbasi side of the Akun community mining where the accident happened. We got to work but felt the atmosphere had changed. No one could say anything, so we hanged around for a while. It was then that one of our people came to hint us of the extent of accident that has happened underground. And right in front of us, they brought four boys who had died, and we thought that would be all. But unfortunately, we heard more people were involved. He alleges that those who died in the accident are more than have been declared. What collapsed is serious. Someone had sent a gang of 15 who were going to bring their load to the surface. But those people cannot be accounted for after the incident. So none of the people who had gone there to bring their loads and their items survived, meaning there could be more people underground. According to Dan, safety measures are in deficit in that part of the mine. Boss, there, there are no maintenance. At Abasi, you can squat for a long while to get to your face. We all do squat before we get in there because there are no maintenance at the Abasi side. So I'm here on a Tuesday morning to speak to managers of the Takwa Mining Scheme. We meet them giving safety briefings to the miners before the start of the day's activities. The general manager here, Mark reject Dan's allegations. It is true that where we have restricted workers not to go and mine is where some people went illegally to work. They unfortunately mined the pillar that supports the ceiling, leading to it caving in on them. Unfortunately, we got four persons who were injured. They were taken to Redeemer Hospital to be cared for. But unfortunately, five other persons lost their lives. This is the biggest fatality since we started. We'll lose one life. He says they cannot hide the fact of the accident due to the high interest of the state in the operations. I'm a major high. I don't think I can condone such evil. In the underground, we're going to underground. We're in there. So be nipa. At the underground, it will be difficult to keep the composed bodies there due to the stench they can emanate. It is even difficult to get oxygen underground, so keeping the composed bodies won't allow people to work. Yeah, they keep the composed bodies underground and people can't work. It's only possible. Mark says safety is one thing they don't compromise in the mine. They mobilize their workers and they sensitize one. We mobilize our workers and sensitize them on the need to adhere to the guidelines management give them in terms of safety. So it is unfortunate. But what are the real numbers involved in this accident? I have been speaking with more people who work directly at the mine to get the real fact. One of them is Abdul. Bodies here There are no other bodies underground because the day it happened, they removed the five bodies and cleaned the entire pit. Mark, the general manager, reveals that to correct the defect at the Abbasi side of the mine, they have closed it down for two weeks to ensure a safety audit and correctional measures are put in place. Captain, inspection now by advice management now we have to let our underground captain and his team go and conduct an inspection of the place to advise us on the steps to be taken before we open the shaft to mining again in case things have gone wrong there we need to correct them before we start mining we will do this to ensure that this kind of accident does not happen again any, uh, um, Some of the workers here who work at the Abbasi side of the Akun community mining scheme are not happy the shaft is being closed for two weeks. But the company says it is necessary to avert the recurrence of the accident that has claimed five people in the mine. Police in Takwa say they also saw five dead bodies and four injured persons being brought out of the mine but have begun their investigations to unravel the fact. For Joy News, 
Samuel Kojo Brace Akun Takwa. Let's go back to Tema and uh, speak with the PRO of the refinery. refinery. Uh, we're bringing a conversation she had with Carlos earlier. We apologize for that. We'll bring you that later when we get it sorted. Let's talk health now. Reddish, swollen, itchy, and sometimes heavy eyes fill the room while causing blurry vision are typical symptoms of acute conjunctiv- conjunctivitis, an eye infection also known as Apollo in the local parlance here in Ghana. A number of colleagues, friends, and family members have been suffering from the infection over the last couple of weeks and has generated a lot of public discourse on the causes, mode of transmission, treatment, and possible prevention. But are the new cases being recorded worth describing as an outbreak and why do we have to deal with the notorious eye disease at this time of the year at all? Dr. Gaston Derry is an optometrist with the Third Eye Care and Vision Center. He's joining us on uh, the Joy News channel for a conversation on this. Good to have you, Doc. I'm doing well. First, let's find out whether there's an outbreak before we can even go into the conversation. Is there an outbreak? Of Apollo, let me put it that way. I believe way. so. Okay. I believe so. Uh, even apart from, apart from statistics uh, in my uh, clinic, for the many for all the years of practice that I've had, I've not had this many cases of red eyes coming into the clinic in just the last past two months. Okay. Um, and then the Ghana Optometric Association has also issued um, a statement. Um, to warn the general public of the upsurge in the cases of uh, Apollo in the country. Okay, so um, now that we are certain that there's an outbreak, then we have to look at the transmission, yeah. how it can be transmitted from one person to another. Yeah. But are there causes? Oh, yes. Um, Apollo, Apollo is actually a viral condition. Okay. Um, and uh, it's spread mainly by contact hand-to-eye contact. Okay. So if you have a polo, you touch your eyes, and then maybe you touch an object or any other thing that you share with someone else, the person touches it and touches his eyes or rubs his eyes, he can get infected. And what makes it scary is that it's actually it's very contagious, and it has a very short uh, incubation period. In two days, tops, if you get infected, it starts manifesting. I'm more interested about the virus uh, that causes this. Yes. So the virus is in a group of viruses that we call the Picona viruses, specifically what we call the enteroviruses, enterovirus 70. And uh, uh, because viral in nature and they are small in nature, they can easily uh, penetrate and cause the infection. And, uh, yeah, it's very, very, it's a quick, very quick and fast to... And how, how does it get to you, like... Is it by some air blowing the virus into your eyes, okay. or is it something you eat? How, what I'll, I'll, I'll use this opportunity to clear the air and demystify some things. You know, okay. we hear that Apollo, if you look at someone who has Apollo, you mm-hmm. may get some. Mm-hmm. And there are some other funny things that people say about yeah. Apollo. No. Yeah. Looking at someone doesn't give Apollo. Okay. It's just the contact that does this. So if someone is infected and touches his eyes because he's uncomfortable because of the Redness, swelling, tearing, sandy feeling, and all that, and the discharge that mm-hmm. he has. If he touches his eyes, then he gets his hand infected. So any other thing that he touches gets infected as well. You touch. So you can liken it to maybe the COVID, but this one has to do with contact. Contact. Yes, it is not by looking at someone okay. at all. 
Okay, so so that's a transmission. If yes. somebody uh, has it yes. and you come in contact with a person yes. or anything that person touches, you are likely to also be infected Very likely with, with Apollo. And you say it has a period of two days? Yes, incubation of two days after uh, you are infected mm. for it to show up. So, so what, what are the symptoms? Okay, so the most common symptom that people will have is the redness. Uh, of the eye. Yes, uh, redness, because the blood vessels become so engorged with blood. You see, Apollo actually attacks the front of the eye. See, the picture displayed right now, uh, there's a white that covers, there's a transparent membrane that covers the white of the eye. We mm -hmm. call it the conjunctiva. Mm -hmm. Same membrane goes behind or in the inner side of the eyelid. Okay. So that is what becomes infected. So you have redness, you have profuse tearing, you have a discharge, like a watery discharge mm -hmm. around the eye. Mm -hmm. And some, if someone has Apollo, he feels like there's, there's some sandy feeling or gritty feeling okay, in, in the, the eye. Yes. That's just that would be very, uh, very uncomfortable. And next, you also have this uh, aversion to light, um, you know, because uncomfortable feeling when light is shown on your eye your or when eye. you are in a bright place. Mm. So this actually would hamper productivity. Okay. I shudder to think or imagine that uh, everyone in multimedia gets Apollo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back to send it. <laughs> that would be a disaster, you can imagine. Yeah. Yes. So um, uh, that is it. Um, Apollo, Apollo can easily spread. And we need to really do something quickly about it. Mm -hmm. I have noticed that um, this is spread very easily okay. in crowded places like schools. Okay. So yeah. the typical thing we hear is that, oh, my son or my daughter brought came home with a red eye, yeah. the next day everyone in the family, the has, family has red eye. Yeah. So um, if your children or your child has Apollo, mm. advice, don't send your child to school. Okay. If you yourself get Apollo, stay away from crowded areas mm. and uh, seclude yourself. Mm. Go to your optometrist um, or your eye doctor, let us check and give you medication for it. Most likely, you'll be getting an excuse duty so that you don't go and infect other people mm. as well. So uh, how, how do you treat Apollo? Okay. So Apollo is managed by eye drops. In truth, it's a condition that we describe as self-limiting. Okay. That means that if we do not do anything about it, mm. eventually it will resolve. Okay. But in between the time, the kind of fire that you go, go through, through is not the best. So we give me. you eye drops to help you to... Um, manage the condition, become more comfortable. The second danger is that if you don't do anything about it, your eye is in a compromised situation mm. and other opportunistic pathogens can, can or bacteria can take can. advantage and you get other infections. Yeah. So, um, uh, those two things. We do, we give eye drops for that. Okay. Don't self-medicate. So that is to say there's actually no cure for Apollo. Uh, no. But you can manage oh, yes, the can discomfort. Man yes, we can, we can manage it. Don't do it yourself because, uh, or don't try to say that I'll just keep it like that. You can get yourself infected. You, can, you will definitely use your hands. So to help people quickly, mm. uh, if you get Apollo, you want to take off the discharge, use a tissue, don't use handkerchief. Okay. You know, you and then dispose it immediately after. dispose it. Yes, just immediately after. Use it. Don't uh, even reuse it. No, don't reuse because okay. you bring more pathogen back. And then you should not uh, do certain things that they tell you. Number one, using seawater. <laughs> And that's so common. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a good, the bad, and the ugly in managing Apollo in the local sense. <laughs> sea water, using um, breast milk. Oh, okay, that's also. <laughs> yes, you hear a lot. Oh, using, I see. Using uh, urine. Oh, my goodness. Tell, On your eye. I'm telling Interesting. you. Interesting. Uh, no, do not use it. Okay. And then um, the other one, I'm not comfortable mentioning it, but some, it's important. Some will talk about Akpeteshi. To wash the eye. Put a potash in the eye and then blow it in the, you know, whoever is infected. Oh, goodness me, who does that? So please, yes, I advise the public not to do any of these because the eyes are very sensitive. Very. The kind of drops that we make are made in such a way that they can uh, fit into the environment of the eye. Yeah. So let's be very careful. There are no spare parts when we talk about eyes. Yep. All around, no, mm -hmm. no, there are no spare parts. So you have to be careful about what you do. Yeah, so right. See your optometry. And so, and so it's just the eye drop yes. that you gave to yes. manage 
Yes, and to also protect the eye from opportunistic infections. Because apart from the fact that the eye is compromised, mm -hmm. you also bring your hand there a lot because of the discomfort. Yeah. Yeah. So you it, may expose it to other yes. diseases. If you have some sunglasses, of course, good mm. sunglasses mm -hmm. uh, for the while. You definitely wear them because you'll be very uncomfortable in light. When you yes. get into contact with light. How, yes. Ordinarily, how long does it take, it takes to go away? Uh, it takes about a week. Some will wow. go up to two weeks. God. Yes. A week, uh, at least a week of agony. My goodness. So, yeah. but if you, you try and get some um, so it depends yeah. on how you handle it. So that's so, you know, yes. the, I mean, that determines how long it stays with you. Uh, is yes, that the that, case? that's that is also the case. Uh, mm. If you do get medication, mm. you would feel that I mean, you feel all the pain and the uh, pain with light tearing reduce drastically or significantly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, before the one week or something. If you do not do any treatment, you really bear the brunt of it. Oh my goodness. So what, what's your advice? I mean, in terms of prevention, because of the discomfort you talk about, so that you don't even get in there, okay. what's your advice to the public? So the first one, it doesn't cost much, wash your hands often. Um, for no reason, just wash your hands. Mm -hmm. After this, you can just go wash your hands, yep. you know. And then um, avoid touching a lot so, of things, uh, okay. maybe the railings, or things that are of public use. Mm. Avoid touching those things. Okay. Uh, don't uh, if you do have a problem, like I said, mm. seclude yourself. Don't go and uh, into social gatherings. It's not it's not nice. Mm. Then, if you get it to go straight to the eye clinic and let us take quick, uh, very good care of you. Mm. Yes, it's something that can be managed easily, but it's gradually becoming a very big menace in the country. In all my years of practice, I've not really seen this upsurge. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So it's really out there. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Derry, uh, for educating us. Uh, Dr. Derry is a, an eye specialist, and uh, he is uh, an optometrist. optometrist with the Third Eye Care and Vision Center. So, I mean, what I take from this, if you have it, don't go into... Um, I mean, where there are a lot of people or into gatherings, don't go to work. If your children have it, don't send them to school. You will just be helping to prevent the spread. And if you have it, uh, try using tissues to clean the room instead of handkerchiefs. And also don't use all the local remedies. Just go to an eye clinic for proper care. Thank you so much. You're Let's get on to other stories. Ghana's ambition to re eradicate poverty under the Sustainable Development Goals may not be fully achieved as many beneficiaries of social protection programs do little to demand better livelihood support from the government. The Civil Society Platform for Social Protection Ghana is re-echoing the need for Ghanaians to appreciate their entitlement to programs under the government's social protection policy. This is something we'll be bringing you uh, on midday at 12 noon. And that's where we wrap up News Desk this morning. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjohnline.com. You'll get more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. See you again at 12. <laughs>
Once every year, the finest marketing minds from across Ghana gather to recognize, reward brilliance in the field of marketing, celebrate their works, and connect. This year, the prestigious Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana present the 34th edition of the annual National Marketing Performance Awards under the theme, Marketing, a tool for economic recovery. Guest of Honor, Professor Abednego Fehi Okoyamati, Vice Chancellor, University of Professional Studies Accra. The date, 30 September. The venue, Labadi Beach Hotel. The time is 7 p.m. For corporate table reservations, call Nana on 055-274-6592 or 0242-307-801. Come join us, wine, dine, award, and celebrate all night long. CIMG, marketing means business. CIMG, working for Ghana. Owning a home is an accomplishment. When it comes to choosing our preference of living, we are faced with a dilemma. Will you go for affordability, comfort, or luxury? Well, we will help you choose your preferred home at a very affordable and convenient way. At the 2023 edition of the Republic Bank Love FM Habitat Fair, slated for Friday, 6 October to Sunday, 8 October, 2023, at the Kumasi City Mall, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. This event is brought to you by your superstation, Love 99.5 FM, in partnership with Republic Bank. Powered by Airport City HDG Homes. And sponsored by DBS Industries Limited, Syntex Tank, the ultimate protection plus insurance product from Star Life Assurance, supported by of sweating the shower wipe your face i'm not going to eat sweat the anxiety amidst tears and joy finally three institutions have sailed through it's the final showdown which school will emerge the overall winner of the maiden edition of big chef tertiary who takes home the cash prize of 20,000 Ghana cds a 10,000 liter syntax tag and other amazing products from our sponsors the big chef tertiary grand finale is coming to the volta region specifically whole technical university campus on sunday october 1 2023 at 4 p.m sharp audience must be seated by 3 p.m. Come, let's celebrate the artistry of cooking. Audience, have a 40% say in the grand finale by voting for your favorite institution via the short code star 713 star 208 hash and follow the prompts. Is it Takrada Technical University, Kumasi Technical University, or Ho Technical University? The battle line has been drawn. Big Chef Tertiary is sponsored by Frytor Oil, Fortune Rise, Indomie, Access Bank, and Syntax Tag, Big Chef Tertiary, the kitchen has no boundaries. Joy Prime, your ultimate experience. Owning a home is an accomplishment. When it comes to choosing our preference of living, we are faced with a dilemma. Will you go for affordability, comfort, or luxury? Well, we will help you choose your preferred home at a very affordable and convenient way. At the 2023 edition of the Republic Bank Love FM Habitat Fair, slated for Friday, 6 October to Sunday, 8 October, 2023, at the Kumasi City Mall, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day. This event is brought to you by your superstation, Love 99.5 FM, in partnership with Republic Bank. Powered by Airport City HDG Homes. And sponsored by DBS Industries Limited, Syntex Tank, the ultimate protection plus insurance product from Star Life Assurance, supported by...
Presbyterian Boys Secondary School Presec hits the Big 8-5. As part of the 85th anniversary celebrations, Presbyterian Boys Secondary School and the Odadia Global Association presents the Presec at 85 Grand Derba on the theme Building Upon a Legacy of Excellence. Come experience the biggest gathering of students, staff, and Odadias. Date, Saturday 30th, September 2023. Venue, the Presec School Grounds at 10 a.m. sharp. The chairman for the occasion, the Right Honorable Professor Odadias. Dajip Mike Okwe, the former Speaker of Parliament, and our special guest of honor, His Excellency Nana Ado Dankwa Kufuado, President of the Republic of Ghana. The dress code. Come in your Presec at 85th anniversary cloth. Since 1938, we've been consistent in building upon a legacy of excellence for Mother Ghana, Africa, and the world. whole weeks of sweating the shower wipe your face i'm not going to eat sweat the anxiety amidst tears and joy finally three institutions have sailed through it's the final showdown which school will emerge the overall winner of the maiden edition of big chef tertiary who takes home the cash prize of 20,000 Ghana cds a 10,000 liter syntax tag and other amazing products from our sponsors the big chef tertiary grand finale is coming to the volta region specifically all technical